this podcast. Tune in for the audio, or you can even watch back. Giving players all the props, or put them on blast. We don't give no hot cakes, only talk facts. We're giving all our devotion, riding high on this wave of emotion. Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time. No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. Can hold it down. Shout out to my man Sammy, got it off the ground. And to all the listeners tuned in right now, got debates, analysis, and speculation. This is sports talk for the new generation. You know where to find us, got a reputation. Sick podcast, your number one sports destination. We're giving all our devotion, riding high on this wave of emotion. Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time. No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. to listen to the sick podcast with tony maradero 55 seconds left in the penalty a minute and 27 seconds left in regulation time 
Boston four, Montreal three. Lafleur coming out rather gingerly on the right side. He gives it into the air back to Lafleur. Oh! The sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. <laughs> there is a ball. Sports entertainment like no other. Rejoint, on lui fait perdre la rondelle une passe devant. Et c'est la bonne. Et c'est la bonne. Et ce sera la victoire des Canadiens. You found the dogs! John, you found the dogs! He found the dogs! And all together they worked the young team to the top. And now a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadians win the Stanley Cup! Brought to you by Energy Transportation Group, driven to be different. La Bita TV, embrace your true nature. And Playground, your premier gaming destination. It's going to be sick. Marinero, the sick podcast. And thanks everyone for watching on YouTube Live, Twitter Live, and Facebook Live. The sick podcast brought to you in part by these guys here, La Bitta TV, brewed in Quebec, a winner of a dozen international awards. La Bitta TV offers quality microbrewery beers made with premium ingredients for everyone's taste. La Bitta TV, embrace your true nature. Also brought to you in part by Playground, experience the world renowned poker experience with free food and drinks at their cash game tables, a bad beat jackpot that is already over $700,000 after the world record setting amount of $2,590,000 was won back on August the 2nd. Weekly promotions, daily tournaments, and unmatched customer service. Why play anywhere else? Located just over the Mercier Bridge, only minutes from downtown Montreal playground. And brought to you in part by Energy Transportation Group, named by the Financial Times as one of America's fastest growing companies in 2023. They were recognized by the Globe and Mail as a top growing Canadian company for two years in a row. They work with some of the biggest Fortune 500 companies providing end-to-end logistics services. Join a winning team and check out Energy's career page for available opportunities. I had a chance to listen to this gentleman speak on a couple of occasions on BPM Spar Radio. Had a chance to see him on TVA Spar Television. And of course, had a chance to see him do his thing in the National Hockey League with the Edmonton Oilers. Um, for some of you, he's the guy who ended our bar jack eye season, and we're going to talk to him about that as well. It's uh, with a lot of pleasure that I welcome to the Sick Podcast for the very first time, in which I hope will be one of several, maybe even one of many, from the Edmonton Oilers, a guy I call Vinny. Vincent Dernay, comment vas-tu? How are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Very, very good. Uh, you are a natural in front of the camera, you're a natural on the microphone. <laughs> and when I I, I'm, I I told you this before, we had a, a brief chat, you and I, in the parking lot of hockey, yeah. et cetera, give or take about, I don't know, four weeks ago or whatever it was. Um, and, and I told you, I said, you know, and I hope you have a very long career. When your career is over, I see you taking the same path that a lot of former NHLers have taken, especially guys from La Belle Province, working on either French radio <laughs> and or French television. So as much as you love hockey, I have to ask you right off the bat, would a possible career in sports media as a hockey analyst, would it interest you? Uh, I think it would. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if, if it would be TV or radio or, or whatnot. Uh, but I think I, I'm not shy of, uh, of sharing my ideas, sharing what I think. Um, uh, and I just try to be as, as honest and as real as possible. And I think that's why I think people appreciate me is just because I don't, I don't be, I don't BS people, you know, it's, that's what I think. That's what I say. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, obviously you see guys, uh, you see guys go, you look at, uh, like Maxim LaPierre, like, you know, he was like third, fourth liner, worked his whole career to stay in the league. And now he's doing so well uh, in the in the um, the media industry, and so yeah. so cool to see. And, and obviously, it kind of shows that you know you don't have to be like you don't have to be Wayne Gretzky to go on 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 uh, on NHL Network, you know, and, and make make a lot of money. You can just be like a fourth liner, a grinder, and just you know if you're if you know what you're doing, yeah, they'll uh, they'll they'll pay you. 
Yeah, you know, you're right about that. Listen, they both have their charm. The beauty of radio is you don't have to dress up. You can go in with track pants. I did it for about 20 years, by the way. Track pants going in. Uh, you don't even have to comb your hair if you don't want to. Uh, TV, I'm a big fan to... of that. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, so, of that. You'll, 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 you'll probably like it then. You'll probably like it. Mind you, it's more of a casual look on podcast too you see i like the podcast world because yeah. for me the podcast world look i love all the worlds i'm i, I dapper uh in all of them uh but uh, uh but um podcast is kind of like a hybrid it's a little yeah. bit of it's kind of like radio it's kind of like television and it's kind of like television because you can you can you can watch it's kind of like radio because you can listen but you can do it in a much more casual context yeah. right so this is so this is it and this is where we are I'm so happy to talk to you. Um, you know, there's all there's a great story in the world of sports every day, and that's what makes the essence of sports so beautiful. Uh, there are some of these amazing stories. We see some of them in the Olympics. We see some of them in amateur sport. We see it in professional sport. We see it in individual sport. We see it in team sport. And your story is absolutely fantastic. And the more people I talk to about Vinny Dearne, and Zach Fucali was one of them. He told me, Tony, if there's one guy I ever met in my life who earned what he's getting by being a professional athlete right now and having a professional athlete contract and making professional athlete money and playing in the best league in the world, it's Vinny Dearnay because he's at training 8 o'clock. He'll never miss a session. He takes his training seriously. He takes everything he does seriously. He was not born with a gift of talent. He is not the most talented player in the world. And he realizes it and he does whatever he has to do to make up for it. So yeah, Zach Fucali is not the only one. But just so you know, Zach Fucali says there's not one professional athlete in the world who has earned it more than Vinny Dearne. That's what he told me. That's pretty cool. I mean, uh, Zach is awesome. I mean, his story is not too bad, eh? His story is yeah. not too bad either. Like he's, uh, but that's that's pretty cool that that Zach said that. It, it, it definitely means a lot from someone who's worked his way up to, and it, he didn't have it easy either. So it's it's no. pretty cool to to hear that. No, drafted in the second round by the Montreal Canadiens, uh, had won a Memorial Cup with Halifax, was hoping that he was going to be the guy in Montreal. Unfortunately, he was here for a cup of coffee, bounced up and down between different leagues, uh, and uh, just coming off a, uh, an American Hockey League Calder Cup season. And I was in communication with him a while ago, and I wasn't even I wasn't even aware. He told me that he was in Russia. He's playing in the KHL yeah. now. I'm like, oh, yeah. where, where did that come from? You know, I, a month ago, I saw you at the LSHL Hockey League, the three-on-three -three, uh, that he has helped organize. He and uh, two of his partners uh, composed a lot of local players uh, or players who, you know, stay in Montreal in the summer. You're one of them. I think it's very, very exciting, all for a great cause. You guys get to stay in shape. You put a smile on people's faces who pay $10 to get into the hockey, et cetera, building and, uh, and, uh, and watch 45-minute uh, games of three-on-three. Three. They get to watch two of them uh, every Tuesday night, if memory serves me well. And yep. speaking of which, they're not the only ones who enjoy it. I have some uh, images of... Uh, Vinny DeRNA here. Uh, hold on a second. Let's bring it up at the LSHL. There we go. <laughs> having uh, having fun, eh? Having. Hey, you know what? My uh, I we played uh, last Tuesday again, and uh, and one one of my buddies I talked to yesterday. He goes, dude, the whole the whole stream, the whole game. We can just hear someone talk, and at some point I didn't know who it was. I realized it was you. You're talking on the bench. You're talking on the edge, and I told him I was like, dude, it's the it's one of the only games I have. I'll skate. I'll do practices. I'll do skill work, but I don't play many games during the summer. So that's my game. That's my my yeah. game of the week. So I try to take it as as I would be, you know, in Edmonton playing. So that's why I'm vocal. I try to have fun. I try to smile. I, and and I want to win. I don't want to, you know, like I'll, yeah. I'll block shots. I'll yeah. go down. Like for me, that's it's my game a week, and I give. I, I I'm trying to get better, and it's so awesome because you play against such great players that 
you're you're getting better like every every week it feels like you're you know you're getting better you're getting uh calmer and quicker and uh so I, i i love to play there the fans are awesome fans are always cheering up and they're always smiling they're happy to be there and at the end at the end of the day it's all going to charity it's all going to you know yeah. uh pancreatic cancer charity which is so cool and uh Everywhere I, I get invited to that it's for a charity, I always try to go because I try to, you know, try to make a little difference as much as mm -hmm. I can. Um, so, yeah, so those uh, those games on, on Tuesdays are they're they're a lot of fun and they get pretty competitive too. Yeah. they get pretty intense. Like the guys sometimes like, they, <laughs> they get rattled. They don't want to lose. So it's uh, it's definitely a great time for 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 everybody there. Montreal Canadiens fans will recognize, of course, some of the names who play in that uh, in that hockey league in the summer. Uh, Nick Suzuki is one. Rafael Arvipinar is another. Caden Gouli is another. And there's some former Montreal Canadiens as well. Uh, Nicolas Delaurier is a, is a is a very good three on three hockey yeah, player. Yeah, he's surprise, very good. He it would surprise a good. lot of people, but he's very yeah. very good. And of course, some big names and Christopher Latang is there and Pierre Luc Dubois and, and the list goes on and on. Yeah. I have to tell you, there's one player, and look, I realize that three on three hockey, it's 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 different than five on five hockey, right? It's a totally different game. Yeah. But there's one player that I have to tell you, and and and. Every player who plays in the National Hockey League obviously is a very good player and has something, okay? But if there's one player who opened my eyes that I didn't know that he had the tools that he has and he can play the way he can play, Mathieu Joseph. Yeah, is, it's crazy. He's, he's really good. Like a he's former, so annoying. Former so fourth round draft pick of the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning and then Uh, made his way to Ottawa a couple of years ago, a right winger who shoots left. He can play either wing. He's got wheels. He's got hands. He's got an ability to score. Like, I wouldn't be surprised and if he has a breakout season in Ottawa. Then again, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't because three-on-three -three hockey is not five-on-five. -five. But how good is he? He's just so hard to play against. Like, he's got one gear. You know, it's funny you say that. We were talking about it after uh, the game because we, we played against uh, his team on Tuesday. And we talked about it after. I was like, that guy only has one gear. Like, it, it doesn't matter. You know, we, we, we talk about summer hockey and, and yeah. you know, playing hard. And, like, that guy just the second the, the puck drops, he goes all in. And, like, he's going to be a little physical, a little slashes. Like, he, like, for him, he's playing for the Stanley Cup every single Tuesday night. Wow, that's uh, nice. Which is, but it's awesome for us because, like, yeah. that makes me push myself more. And it makes, you know, the, the, the other guys push push themselves more because like, all right well if that guy's going to that level i gotta match i gotta match his his compete level i gotta match his intensity so it's uh i, I mean i i he's hard to play against because he's very intense very he's got a great stick he's always like in your pants always around uh he's a really smart player and he can score like you know he's gonna get a lot of, of, of breakaways he's gonna score goals uh so no i mean i i really hope for him i think uh Uh, he had a, a decent season uh, last year, but yeah. I really hope for him that uh, you know after this uh, this summer he can even step up even more. And uh, you know I think Ottawa should have a pretty pretty good team. Yeah, uh, I think they're they're they should be really good, and I believe that he's going to have a pretty good impact on on uh, that team. Another guy that impressed me a lot too, but um, I, I I knew a little bit more of him, and uh, I knew what he could do. Anthony Beauvillier is a really good three-on-three -three oh, player, I find, too. Oh, he's, he's one of the best three-on-three -three players. Yeah. Uh, I mean, his, like, the, the ice is so small, and once he starts skating and shooting, it's all, like it's so hard for goalies to, to, to stop him. He's going to skate in and just rip one, bar down, like, cup cheat. Like, he's just he's a really, really high-skilled player. All he's right, really so now good. enough of talking about everyone else. Let me talk to you about you. Let, let me use hockey DB if I can. So we can, <laughs> we, can, we, can we can, we can, we can, we can, we have no, time. Do we so have we can, time for that? no, but we can give people an idea of, of just how far you've come, right? Um, born in Laval, Quebec, 27 years of age, six foot six, it says 215 there. Yeah, that's um, not, that's not good. Two, no. 230. 230. 230. Uh, I've, I, gained, I've gained a few LBs. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, story of my life. All right, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, BCHL, 
Yeah. Uh, Providence College, so NCAA for uh, for what uh, four years? Yeah. East Coast Hockey League, AHL, East Coast Hockey League, AHL, AHL, and this season, um, some time in the AHL, and then you make your way to the Edmonton Oilers, and you play thirty six games in the regular season, and you play twelve games in the playoffs. And you arrived in the National Hockey League after being drafted seven years ago. Seven years later, you arrive in the National Hockey League and play your first game at age 26. Your story is fantastic, my friend. I mean, I'm sure it you was, would have preferred uh, to have been in the National Hockey it was, League eight, it was a hell five of a years ride. ago. It but, was a uh, hell of a ride. <laughs> so I want to keep that up for a second. That's a lot of bus rides. That's a lot of traveling. Yeah. And so my question <laughs> to you is, at one point, just once, even only once, do you ever say to yourself, I don't think this is going to happen? Or did you ever say to yourself, you know, uh, how long do I want to do this for? Maybe I should, uh, I should think of my second career. Did that ever happen? Even one hundred percent, hundred percent happened more, more, more than once, more than once. I mean, when you're on the bus in the East Coast and you're traveling 20, 22 hours and you're just, what am I doing here? You know, oh like, what, are, like, why, why, why am I like, why am I busing every day? And, you know, I'm so far away from the NHL and, and, you know, that was my first year. And, you, you know, you look at the roster and there's, there's 16 guys at camp. All right, 16, 16 D men, 16 defensemen at camp, and, and you kind of see it like, okay, I'm number 16. Like, they only keep six or seven. I'm number 16. And it's just, you tell yourself, like, I am so far away from making it, you know? And, and, and you, you, like, I left college. I'm like, oh, like, I'm so ready. I'm going to show them, like, what I got, and I'll show them I can play. And, and you show up there, you're like, there are so many good players it is crazy, you know, and in, and I think the first year, that's what it was, especially the, my first year at camp. I was just so amazed by the amount of good players that were there that I was not even, you know, I was just there to be there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and there's you know, some stuff happened throughout my pro career and like my first uh, first pro career, uh, f- first pro season, I, uh, I, I got a concussion, concussion ended up uh, lasting longer developed anxiety, starting to have anxiety attacks, starting being depressed, led to depression, uh, wanted to quit hockey, wanted to quit on life pretty much. I didn't want to be here anymore. Um, and at some point it was either I, I go in the same direction and it, it goes not, it goes dark or, you know, I, I, I get over my ego. I get over, you know, the the stubborn guy that's like doesn't need help, and that's what I did. I got over myself. I got over my ego, and I I went to get help. And it's probably the best thing I've ever done in my life, honestly. And I'm so glad it happened. I'm so glad I I went through that depression, and I've learned to deal with anxiety. I've learned to deal with with life because life happens every day. You know, you don't control life. You don't. And people always, they always say, oh, I just got to get through the week. Once I get to the weekend, I'll be better. But things happen every day. And I, I didn't, I couldn't realize that, you know, I couldn't understand it. And I feel like my depression just kind of made me realize that you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but you control today. So today, smile, put a, put a smile on your face because you control that. I don't control what my neighbor does, but I control my smile on my face. Yeah. And I control, I control my mood. And I control, you know, my happiness I have. And throughout my depression, I was not, it was not Vinny. It was not, I was never smiling. I was always sad. I was always crying. And yeah, from there I went to get, I went to grab some tools. I started reading more. I started listening to more podcasts, uh, changed some, some habits I have, some, some life habits that uh, they were not necessarily good for me. Uh, yeah. But in college, it, it was, it was okay. But if there, there, the there are some there are some podcasts that have an ability to put a smile on people's faces. There's one that's <laughs> actually I think is better than the others. But hey, uh, you know I might be so, a little bit biased. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So it was. Uh, I would say like 
if you ask me like throughout my whole career like what my what was the turning point i would say that would be it like my depression and all that like and i and and people are like well that must have been so hard and like it was the hardest time of my life i never and i didn't want to talk about it i didn't want to talk to uh about my depression to my brother i didn't want to talk talk about it to my parents i was so ashamed of it i was uh yeah my, my ego was in was, yeah, was in it. the way and yeah so it was uh i'm really fortunate to, to have gone through all of this and having the support group that I, i've had uh since day one and and it was a tough time and once i once i got starting doing more starting to feel better and from then it was just having fun and you know, you know Vinny, and it's still the same thing today just have yeah, fun with it you know it's funny you say this a uh, couple of things but um you know, I suffered probably four concussions in the last 10 years, right? And the first one, like, was, it was, and I, I've talked about, that was really, really freak. It was stupid, right? I went to watch my son's game and, um, and we, all the parents were just standing up against the fence because there was no stands. And I think my wife had either sent me a text message or she was going to call me. Anyway, I turned around with my phone. I was going to send a text and, and boom, the ball came in like, like a line drive, right? Boom, the soccer ball and caught me in the side of the face and the ear and whatever that I went down and. I didn't quite know what was going on. I woke up with a headache the next day, but I never had a concussion before in my life. Uh, and the, 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 you know, the, the whole field was spinning and stuff. But I mean, I went on, I st still kept working. And about a month and a half later, I, these headaches were terrible. And anyway, long story short, it was diagnosed as a, as a concussion by a physiotherapist because even the hospitals didn't know. They thought I was having migraines and they were, you know, giving me intravenous and antibiotics and all that stuff. They said, oh, it's a rebounding headache. Anyway, it was a concussion. And then, and then, you know, it lasted about seven or eight months and, and I had to take antidepressants to help me sleep because, oh, there we go. Sorry, uh, sorry. Don't worry about it. I had to take uh, antidepressants to help me sleep. I kept on seeing a light and then I went back to play soccer with my buddies to try and lose some of the weight I had put on because of the pills. And uh, I ended up heading the ball and the symptoms came back. And a couple of years later, I... Uh, I was kneeling down in the fridge and I went to put some water bottles inside the fridge. I got, I hit my oh. head on the freezer and the, you know, the way it is, right? The symptoms. Yeah. Come back. And then a couple of years after that, I I'm at my garage opener and I'm going, I'm walking underneath the garage. And when it closes, I hit my top of the head. And then you go to the gas station, you get in your truck and by mistake, you hit your head on the hood of your, and the symptoms keep on coming back. And I'm very happy to say, very happy to say that it's a couple of years now that things are going pretty good. But all to say, and the reason why I bring this up is I find myself, and I've always been a sensitive guy, okay, always, but I find myself more emotional and crying a lot more since the concussions happened. Yep. Right? Yep. You find that? I mean, I've always been an emotional guy, but once I was in that, like, that, that season – I was so emotional, like, I, and even though I was starting to feel better, like, my, I was playing, my concussion was gone, and I was still, like, very sensitive, and it took me, like, a couple of years to, like, it, it kind of start, like, re, like, re, uh, how, how can I say, it? just try to, like, be more comfortable with, with the emotions. It, yeah. I felt so uncomfortable, you know, it, fe yeah. it felt like I didn't know how to, like, express them. Uh, and it felt like it came from from the concussion. It, it, yeah. It's so weird how concussions work. Like it's freaky. Yeah. How much? Uh, how big of an impact it has on your on your life? You're right. That's the that's the uh, the injury out of all of them that I take the most serious. Um, oh, for sure. And and I I told my boys. I said, with all due respect to the medical professionals, but if they tell you a month, uh, take two or three. Like I I'm like I'm I'm I, I'm probably I'm very very careful with that. Okay. Having said all that. You know, you, you talked about the, the 20 hour bus rides, the 22 hour bus rides. The more I've been involved in this kind of work and in this business, the more I'm realizing, and you correct me if I'm wrong, it's an opinion that I have, that a, to be a professional athlete, yes, of course, the most talented ones have the highest probability of making it. But I really believe that it's more mental than anything else and the ones who believe in themselves, work at it every day, keep chipping away, are disciplined, and stick with it are the ones who make it. Because what you have to go through mentally, there's so many lows, it's easy to say, 
I don't need this because you know what? I, I have a buddy. He's got a company. I know I can go work for him. He'll probably pay me six figures. He'll probably give me a month vacation. I'll be okay for the rest of my life. The ones who stick with it, the mental for me is the most important thing. Yeah, true or false? I mean, I, I, true, hundred percent, true, true, true. Times a hundred, and and people always ask me, what what has changed? Like you playing East Coast? Like what is, did you change? Like your strength coach? Did you change your your skills coach? Did you change? I didn't change anything. I changed my habits in there. I started doing. I started doing meditation. I started reading. I started. And that's why I showed you this. This in here, right here. The amount of things that are in there that help me out, that help me clear my head after games, after playoffs, tough game against LA, game four, I believe, game four or five, tough game I played. I was so bad. I left the ice so dep so in my head, anxious. I'm like, I can't believe I almost caught the game, almost caused the series. And then to stop all that, the brain, the, the little voice inside the brain that tells you you're so bad and you're this or that, just the journal. I, I've learned to use my tools and not get stuck in the you know the cycle of you're bad and you're this you got to do this i'm here for a reason i know i'm here i just gotta execute i just gotta believe in myself so and, so without without Vinny, without getting too private what's in that yeah. journal like what would you write after a very bad game that you played and what was a very important game in the playoffs would you write something are you reading something what would it... yeah i i write it so i'll just write so i'll write let's say i i always write the date so like i can go back to it and i can see like how i felt and and, and whatnot but i'll just write about the game i'm like i'm i don't know i'm so mad right now and i'll i'll like question myself why oh, i'm so mad well like i, I played so bad today and i have a and like why uh, oh, I played so bad because, and I kind of like question myself and I try to go all the way to why. And, and most of the time, there's no reasons why. That's just how the game went. You can't play a good game every single game, you know, like, you, and obviously you don't want to make the same mistakes and you want to learn from them. But after the game, I can tell myself a hundred times I was bad. The game is over, you know? So that's why I kind of try to take my anxiety that I have, the, the, the voice, the, the, all these things that go in my head and I just try to put it on a sheet of paper and it simplifies it. You see it. You're like, okay, it's, it's black on white. It's not, you know, I'm not costing anything. I'm not, it's black on white. It's simple, but it's over and I can put it behind me now, you know? So I feel like it's like, it's more of a visual that I put it out there and I, I turn the page and it's over tomorrow. I'm going to wake up and it's a new day. It's a new page. It's a blank page. And I got to write it again. So, you know, so it's kind of a daily and like, like today I, I wrote right before the, the podcast came back, came back from my practice, from my, from my workout and just wrote in it a little bit about my practice workout. And at the end I was like, I am, I am proud of myself for, uh, for, for practice and workout today. It went really well. Like I got to keep, I got to keep doing that. I will take care of my, of my body the rest, the rest of the day. And so it just stuff like that to keep me disciplined and all. And I feel like it takes my anxiety away because I, I feel prepared. I feel like all my anxiety is going in there wow. and it's right now it's probably my best tool. Honestly, it's, I've, at first, I was oh again the ego of like why why would I write in a journal like I'm not yeah I'm 27 years old oh I'm a big guy yeah. you know at the end of the day like that's the best tool and I've been telling like tell my mom and telling like my friends like hey guys like guys are so anxious like dude start writing it's gonna help you why would I write just do it you'll see and they're, oh dude I actually feel pretty good afterwards. I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's why I do it. <laughs> so so if we continue to have a great conversation, and I think it's been pretty good so far, is there a chance that I'm going to be in Vinny D'Arte's journal? Like, is there a chance you're going to say, I just had a podcast. <laughs> this guy's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, this guy's guy's the man. Man. <laughs> Tony, there's a chance. There, uh, hey, maybe, hey, we had, we had a conversation a month ago. Maybe you're in it already. You don't know. Uh, uh, that's pretty <laughs> funny. All right, okay. That's, listen, that's that's pretty cool. I, um, I, I don't think I've ever talked to an athlete who told me that he takes notes like that in a journal and it helps him deal with everything. Yeah. 
and uh, I, I think and, that's I think that's amazing. And by the way, uh, I have I have two I have uh, like affirmations. So I have like my five affirmations I'll write every day. So like uh, I'll I'll tell you so like my let's say like the first one is I'll write every single day. I am self confident and I embrace uncert uncertainty. So in our world we're so unstable. Of course. And I would get so anxious every time there would be a change in schedule, a change in this, a change. And being called up, being sent down, being so I and just from writing that now something happens. I'm so casual about. It, I'm like, oh, you know, whatever. Wow. Uh, like my second one, my second one that night changed it. But it used to be I will play in the NHL. That was a I would write it every day. Wow. And now I changed it to I am an 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 NHL player and I will win the Stanley Cup. So every day that's what I write in my journal, and you know what? I just you know what? I just said it, and I have chills right now. Cause, wow! You know, I'm gonna I go to, I'm gonna happen. go to the uh, I'm gonna go to the store today. I'm gonna buy a book like that one. I'm gonna write. I will be skinny one day. <laughs> I, will be, <laughs> I will be skinny one day. <laughs> um, but yeah. you know, it's just it, it's I I got that from a book. It was called Mind Hacking, and it was like to rewire your brain. Yeah. To rewire. To, so you tell your brain every day. That, yeah. that, that's yeah. th these are your goals so these are my five goals and it, it it's not oh i want to be rich there, there's no like there, there's one in here is I, I will own real estate it doesn't mean I, i'm going to own it right now but right now i'm reading a book about it and just because i write my affirmations every day yeah. i see something i see like a real estate something i think about it right away. I'm like, oh yeah i want to own real estate so that's good for me to learn about it and to ask questions and to so I don't know. It's it's a I'm, pretty I'm, cool I'm not tool. A, I'm think. not a financial advisor, but I do speak to a lot of them all the time, and uh, and I think what they would tell you is buy that real estate as soon as you can because yeah, or else no, you're gonna I... you're gonna end up spending that money. And when your career is gonna be over, and we wish you a very long career, but we know that nothing is guaranteed in professional sports, and a career can yep. be cut short. At least you'll have that real estate to fall back yep. on, right? Okay, oh, yeah. so. Um, everybody remembers their first game in the National Hockey League. So it's a long trek for you, of course. We talked about it. Let's bring back up the Hockey DB in a second if we can here. So we have the Hockey DB here. And uh, once again, you were drafted seven years ago. So at age 26, you play your first game in the National Hockey League. Talk to me about all the emotions that you lived. From being told that you were going to start to who you called, who you reached out to, the time you took for yourself, what you said to yourself, the second you stepped on the ice for your first shift in a National Hockey League game. Talk to me about all that. Uh, well, I so I was in Calgary. I was playing with, with Bakersfield. We were playing an afternoon game in Calgary. And after we lost 2-1 through the game, coach called me in, which is weird. I'm like, why? Like, what's going on? And I, he had a smile on his face, and we just lost. Why does he have a smile on his face? And I kind of like did one plus one, but at the same time, it's like it's it's not going to be me. It's always the other ones, right? Always yeah. the other ones I get called up. It's not me. Like it's not. Yeah. And as he just, he just started like shaking his head, and he knew. Like, and I just, I just looked down, and for three, four seconds, I didn't say a word, and I just saw like the last ten years of of work and of of crying, of pain, of sacrifice and i just i just started crying and it was such like a like the amount of times that i saw it in my head that i went to bed and i was like one day i'm gonna get called up one day the coach is gonna be wow. you're called up one day you know like just those those words you're getting called up like yeah the amount of times i saw it in my head and when it happened like just talking to you it just it brings me such cool memories and then from there uh i ran back in, in the the locker room grabbed my phone i ran out and I called my my parents right away, and and the game just ended like five minutes ago. And they're like, my mom's like, why are you calling so early? What's going on? I'm like, is dad there? I want to talk to both of you on the speaker, please. Like, blah blah. Are you okay? Like, you, you sound like you're crying. I was like, is, is dad there? He goes, yeah, yeah. It's like, guys, I'm going to the National Hockey League. I just got called up, and it was like, wow, amazing. Oh, just being able to give that to my parents after you know so yeah. many so many years, so much money, yeah. so much time. Like they they do they they sacrificed so much for me, and, and yeah. like it was such a cool moment to give them that. And I called my brother on Facetime right after, 
And I was like, bro, he was like, why are you crying? Stop crying. Yeah. Like, dude, I'm going up, man. It's happening. And we wow. both cried together. Like it was. Where was it your was first game? Where was your first game? In the, in Anaheim. In Anaheim. Yeah. So, so right after that, I, you know, I told him, Hey guys, like you're flying here. I don't care. You know, the price, the whatever you're, you guys going to be there Wednesday. And then I talked to, I talked to head coach, uh, uh Woodcroft and, uh, you know, he told me, Hey, you're probably not playing against LA. You're, you're going to play probably Wednesday against Anaheim. Uh, so great. So parents flew in, I brought them to, to dinner the, the night before, uh like i it was so fun like i i called him in an uber got like a black suv like trying to be like all fancy <laughs> like, brought them brought them to a nice steakhouse my my parents are like my like dad was wearing a hoodie and a hat i'm like dad yeah, it's a nice steakhouse can you like so oh well i'm not used to that <laughs> was, ah, that's cool. it that's was cool. it was so cool Amazing. and then uh and then and then uh you know my my rookie lap like just going on the ice, you know, obviously being the first guy and in Anaheim, there's not many fans, which was yeah. good. Cause I could see like my brother, my parents. And, and when I jumped on the ice, my rookie lab, the first, I looked up and the first person I saw was my brother with my Bakersfield Jersey on and his arms, like just the highest he could be. And uh, he was crying amazing. and he was just so happy for me. And, uh, and my parents were just a little bit higher and they were both did, crying. Did I could your, see, I did could your see brother? Them. Did your brother play hockey, Vinny? Yeah, he did. Okay. He did, he did. What level did he, he get to? Uh, senior double A. I don't know if you, it's like the. I hear uh, you. But semi pro. Semi. I don't know what. What? Uh, what's What's going on with you? Was that kind of like his dream? Yes or no? Yeah. And did yeah. you feel like you, you like, you you pulled it, was, it off I, together? It was. It was. He, he was. And he still is. He's living the dr his dream through me, you know. Like yeah. my brother had more talent than me. He was more skilled, more talent, but he didn't have the will. He was lazy uh, in, in hockey. He didn't want. He was like, I'm not ready to work out, do the sacrifice. Uh, is he an yeah, older brother? Like, is he an older brother? Yeah, five years older. Yeah, the younger ones usually have a little bit more drive. I don't know what yeah. it is, but I gotta tell you this. Um, one of the most touching moments for me in hockey was Roberto Luongo's induction into the Hockey Hall of Fame. And I don't know if you remember it, but his brothers Fabio and Leo were right there along with his parents and, and Roberto's wife and his kids, obviously. And at one point during his speech, he says, I want to acknowledge my brothers Fabio and Leo. This was their dream, too, to be a professional hockey player. And uh, I share this with you. We did it together. And and the brothers are, like, extremely emotional. The brother, as a matter of fact, owns a restaurant in uh, in the East End, in Little Italy. I don't know if you know that, but uh, no, Roberto's no, brother, no Fabio, it's, it's, a, it's a great it's a great pizzeria. It's a restaurant, but I really like the pizza there. It's La Belle Italienne, en Chantalon. And uh, they also have fried gnocchi as an appetizer, which, yes, someone like me would really love fried gnocchi as an appetizer. And uh, I shared when I, when I saw Fabio earlier this summer, because I went with my wife for a nice pizza and a nice meal, I shared that with him. And he was like, yeah, you, you see me get emotional the way I did? And I said, yeah. And he goes, oh, man. And the camera was zooming in right in on me. And I said, Fabio, it was, it was a great moment, man. It was It's a great moment. Yeah. And so I, you know, when I thought about that and I asked you, you know, that was, was that your brother's dream too? And usually when brothers are playing sport together, it's, it's their dream, right? It's their dream. It's, it's pretty cool. Amazing. Um, what can you tell me about being on the ice at practice <laughs> or being on the bench? You know where this one's going, right? <laughs> and, I've, I've heard it a few times. <laughs> and watching, and watching Connor McDavid do his thing. Uh, every time I, uh, thank God for, uh, putting him on my team and not against me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's just, it's, it, there's not much that I can say that people don't know. It's just, he is what people see. That's yes. He is just so special. And it's in practice, you know, it's like games practices like that. Just it, once he steps on the ice, there's something in his brain. I don't know what it is. And he just becomes like a freak. He's just crazy. He's yeah. just, it's impressive. It, it's, it's crazy. And it's, 
it's cool to go against him, you know, because it's it's a challenge. I see it as like a challenge. It's like no, like I want to I want to stop him, and it's hard. It's it's really really hard. But uh, like this season, once he at some point, I think this, the practice was over, and he came to see me. Hey, Vin, uh, are you done? I was like, yeah. He goes, all right, let's let's go practice some some one on ones. And he goes like, we're we're going hard, like we're going all out, like cross check. And so like, you sure? He goes, yeah, 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 let's go. And we did two or three like one-on-ones like for 30 45 seconds in the corner with Connor mcdave and i'm like what the hell is going on you know i came back from <laughs> went back in the 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 locker room afterwards i sat down i'm like holy crap that was so cool you can know, somebody like, can, can somebody please tape this because i'd like to have this souvenir for <laughs> yeah, the rest of my can career we get a video please a camera amazing uh, but it's just you know, it just shows that like he's he's got such a big impact on on everybody he talks to, and he's so calm when he talks. And I don't know, he's uh, he's a pretty special player. And I'm telling you right now, he's gonna break more records this year. He's gonna be better this year. Like it, it, I don't know how, I don't know how he's gonna do it, but he's gonna be better this year because right now he is not happy. You know, seeing like seeing him after we lost and the emotions he had and and. I can I can only imagine how hard he worked this this summer and how pumped he is to come back and have still have the team that we have and and have a pretty good chance uh, at the 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 title. So I love that you're saying this because there are some, not many, one I know I don't have to mention him, who believes that Connor's individual success is more important to Connor McDavid than team success. I have nope. vehemently denied that and said there's no I, I way. Have, I have a little story for you if you want. Tell me. I, uh, I, I'm pretty sure it was, play, it was playoffs, maybe the second game of playoffs against L.A., maybe the second or third game. And I don't know what happened. There's a play. We got scored on. And I could have probably stopped it. You know, and and Connor got dash one. So you, you got a dash. We all, we all got um minus one and obviously like i know his stats and so after the game i went to see him i'm like hey man like sorry like that was a bad pass on me like dash one is on me i'm sorry dude and he, and he turned around and he looked at me weird and he was like dude i don't care about the stats dude. i just want to fucking win and and he didn't you know and it, and it was not like stage it was not he legit turned on and looked and he's like dude i just want to fucking win and i'm like all right got it because, captain because. you know like, i was like that's awesome. That's what I want to hear. Yeah. I, I was so fired up. I was like, dude, I'm going to, like, you tell me that right now. That's awesome. And like, yeah. people always tell me, oh, Connor is points. And when, you know, playoffs, when playoffs show up, you better show up with him because yeah. he's going to war. And, and, you know, it was, he's, he's showed, he showed me that he's, he's a player. He's not just a skill guy. He's not a point guy. He's a player. He's a hockey player. You know, he's with all due respect to everyone in the league. And there are so many great players. I mean, I I think unless you choose to close your eyes, I think it's safe to say he's the most incredible hockey player in the world. Okay. And those who are naysayers or uh, not presidents of his fan club will tell you that, uh, you know, he hasn't been able to win the cup. So, uh, you know, I, so, you know, I, and then I say, well, you know, if Ray Bork didn't demand a trade, he wouldn't have won a cup either. Does that not, you know what I mean? Like Marcel Dion never won a cup and, and, you know, uh, Nate McKinnon won it a couple of years ago, but up until that point that he hadn't won it, they said the same thing about him. And then finally he won it. And I'm convinced in my heart of hearts, I believe this, that Connor McDavid will play on a team that will win a Stanley cup at least once in his career. I'm convinced that's going to happen. All right. Because for the most part, great players end up winning a Stanley Cup or more. But the league is so good nowadays, and one team wins the Cup, and there's 32 teams. You need you need a team, and you need everything to fall into place, and you need a little bit of luck too. Yep. And, you know, I never view it as on Connor because he hasn't been able to win the Stanley cup. And what, like I said, there are some that see it that way. It upsets me when I hear it. It upsets me when I hear, ah, uh, Connor McDavid, the, 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 you know, the, the professional athletes, they want to win. Yep. They want to win. I mean, at the end of the day, when you're playing hockey, you play to play in the national hockey league. And when you play in the national hockey league, you play to win the Stanley cup. That, that's, that's, yep. that's what it is. Right. Yeah, and, and and I think Connor knows too that he won't 
like we're not in basketball. You can't win the game by just one guy being putting putting up 50, 50 points. You know, yeah. Like Connor can put up three points. Like like Leon scored four goals. We still lost. You know, like it's like we need everybody, and like those two, they know that, and they know, and that's why they always try to like push the other guys, and they try to bring them. Like, hey, boys, let's go. We need you. Let's go. Like fourth liners, third line. You know, like it doesn't matter. We need you to win. We need everybody to win the Stanley Cup. It's not just Connor and Leon, and they know that, and that's why you know, and that's why you see like you, you block a shot, Connor would come give me a little tap on the pads. Hey, Vin, keep keep doing that, brother. I love it. You know, just stuff like that. People don't see it. People don't know it. You know, yeah, like they don't. Yeah. But those guys, they want to win. They want to win bad. And I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I can't. I can't see what's going to happen this season. These playoffs. The. But I can tell you right now that we'll be hungry all season, and Amazing. we're really excited. We're really, really, really excited because those guys are going to be the two leaders. That you know, they're going to come out the gates hard, and we're just going to follow them. I, I, I kept you on for a long time, and I feel bad about it, but uh, just a couple of more minutes here. You brought up yeah, the concussions sure. before. No, don't, don't you brought up the it. concussion before, right? Yep. So here you are playing at the uh, you know in Montreal versus the <laughs> Montreal Canadiens, and you decide to tangle with Arbor Jackeye. Let's bring up a picture. All right? There's you and Jackeye, right? You talked about your concussion. What are you doing fighting, man? Let's keep it hey. up. It's it's part of part of the job, part of the job. If you want to, hey, he, he, Zach, Zach said it. He said that guy's ready to do anything to to make it. Yeah. Well, if I have to fight, I'll fight. You know. It's, okay. Uh, look, at this picture. Would... look at this picture that's up here. What are you thinking right now here? What are you thinking right now? What's going on here? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Try to take him down as soon as possible because I'm tired of getting hit in the head. <laughs> okay. How's how, strong? He's strong. Yeah, he's really strong. He's yeah. really like he's really strong and he's he's a puncher. You know, the second he drops the gloves, he's a puncher. He's gonna throw. He's gonna throw like I'm more of a guy who's patient, who likes to, you know, keep him away and I'll jab, I'll try to throw one or one one or two there. But I wouldn't I'm not the you know, I'm not a striker. I'm not gonna be the guy that punches yeah. a lot, but that guy, like that's what he does. And you know, if you look at the video, like he keeps punching at some point, I'm like, okay, like I'm done, and I, you know, I pull hard. I try to take him down, and and the fight ended there. You know, it was. Were you were you nervous? You're, that's family and friends, right? That's in Montreal, right? You don't, uh, you don't want to look bad there, right? Are you nervous uh, at, at all? That moment? I mean, you don't think, right? You're not like, okay, I'm I'm fighting him. Okay, I'm fighting him. You know, I'm not I'm not the guy who's like gonna think all day. All right, tonight I'm fighting him for sure. I'm, I'm like, yeah. if it happens, it happens. You know, and I, and I knew, like, I knew they had Pizzetta, Jack High, and I'm like, I'm in front of my friends, family, and um, uh, and we were down three nothing, and I was all right. I got I got to spark something, and like between the first and second, I was thinking about all this. All right, maybe it would be the great timing to get my first pro fight in my first uh, NHL fight in, and. You know there was a little battle with him and uh, and Kane net front. He gave a cross check to uh, to Kane. There was a little brawl, and I just I was like, all right, it's now. And so I had like a two seconds of it's happening, and then after that, it just the brain just just it just does whatever it does, and yeah. I got and it it went it went it went pretty it went fine. I think it was uh, it's not my best fight, but it went it went well. No, no, but you, you know, you you came out of it right, a hundred percent healthy. You skated away, no problem. But as for yeah. poor Arbor, let's see him. Ah, shoulder, something's yeah. wrong here, right? Yeah. So, uh, it ended his season. Uh, that injury, and um, and you know the way Montreal Canadiens fans are. Uh, that the Montreal yeah. Canadiens are absolutely everything. I'm wondering. I'm wondering. Did you get any? Uh, did you get any hate mail saying you had that? Oh yeah. Practice? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. People telling telling me to go hang myself. Uh, ah. That I shouldn't shouldn't play in this league. That I'm a, I'm a meat. Like I'm a, just a tough guy. And like I picked on him, and that he didn't want to fight me, but he had to because I'm a meat. And blah, blah, let me blah. guess. Let me guess. Like, Instagram DMs, yes sir. Yeah, Instagram DMs. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yes yeah. sir. And uh, yeah, I, I, get, I get, like, I get a lot of those crazy. like every day. It's yeah, I like, bet. I bet. You know what? Like, you know, 
you're hot and you know it, you know, you got this, this black curly hair and you got these bluish green eyes and all the women in Montreal want you and, and save some for us. And I hate you because of it. And yeah, no, that never happened. All right. Okay. Uh, we talked about your, your, your break in Edmonton and we, you got to get a little bit lucky too. There was a, a door that opened up for you. I think too, when Tyson Barry got traded as well, I'm sure that didn't hurt, right? Because, a um, a, uh, a a right-handed defenseman gets traded yep. to Nashville for Matthias yep. Ekholm and left-handed defenseman coming back. And, yep. of course, uh, you're a right-handed defenseman. Stuff like that helps, right, too? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it helps. Um, but I think that they, they were ready to do that after seeing what I what I did. You know, so, so it, maybe the trade happened. Maybe I was maybe 15, 20 games in or so. So I showed... You know, I showed what I could do, I, and and that's what that was the whole point of me going up. You know, I started the season, couldn't do camp, had a hand surgery, uh, started playing Bakersfield, played five games, got infected, had a second hand surgery, couldn't play for another month and a half, played eight games, and I I got called up, and right away Ken Allen told me, "Hey, you're coming here to take someone's spot. Show me what you got." Now there, sounds good. You got it, and then I just had fun. I just play, you know, I, you're playing Anna and my family's here. It's like, that's fun. You know, playing San Jose and then played Vegas. Like, damn, this is... You know, you know, know. That, you know that Ken spends a lot of time in Montreal, eh? Do you know that? No, I have no idea. His daughter, I, he, men, he mentioned to me that he liked Montreal a lot, but he didn't, his, he didn't tell me he spent a lot of time there. I don't know if she still... I don't think she still does. But back in the day, his daughter went to McGill. Oh, no way. Yeah, so he used to come oh, down to, awesome. He used to come down to Montreal all the time. He loved Montreal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there you oh, have that's it. That's cool. So next time you, but, uh, you you see him, you you can you can bring it up. Oh, so I you, will you, for you, sure. Your oh, daughter yeah. went to McGill. Hundred percent. Hey, hey uh, Vinny, this has been a lot of fun. It was a conversation where you know I look now, and we've been doing this for fifty minutes, almost an hour, and uh, it flew by. It feels like it was ten minutes. I, and I'll, you know, I'll one of the to, things I have to to come back then. I, I, I hope so. That's what it means. I hope so. Uh, unfortunately, though, like uh, French radio and French television, it the, the, you know they, they they pay. This is a, we're a small little uh, podcast here. But uh, <laughs> but listen, I tell you this: one of the things I, I try to accomplish when having these conversations is I want to get the listeners and the viewers to get to know the person, uh, and not just what they see on TV and the hockey player, and and. I'm not always able to accomplish that. And I think we we're able to do it today. And, uh, you know, I, I learned a lot more about you than, than, you know, I knew. And then a lot more than the 10 minutes that we talked in the parking lot, give or take about a month ago. Um, you're a great guy. It's a great story. And, you know, when I didn't know you, I was like, who the hell is this guy over here? He's, like, yeah, man. He's, like, he's all over radio. He's all over television. Who is this guy here? You're a great guy. Uh, you're, you're a great story. And I know that I'm going to like really focus on a lot of your games this year and, and really watch you. And I'm going to be pulling for you not only this year, but for the rest of your career. We talked about that Stanley Cup. Uh, I think considering the way your career has gone, you've already got it without getting it if you know what i mean because i think yep. you've already won uh, on the ice and in life but um hey why not a stanley cup so i i, I wish you let's that all it. the best to you all right let's do it and uh, and hopefully uh uh you know you enjoyed this so much that i'll get to take a picture with the cup one day <laughs> <laughs> thank you Th thanks tony for for all the the kind words and all that i, yeah. I re really appreciate it and uh, no, I mean, I'll be back for sure. If I get the, the invite back, I'll be back for, for a second round because I've you, uh, like, like you've seen, I like to talk. So I have many yeah. more stories to, to share. Hey, thanks so much. Vincent Dernay, merci beaucoup, mon chum. Bonne saison à toi. Have a great season. Most of all, la santé. Be healthy, okay? Thanks, Tony. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this podcast as much as I did. I absolutely loved it, to tell you the truth. And if you're on YouTube, like it, share it with your friends, comment sick, S-I-C-K, S-I-C-K, S-I-C-K. And um, if you're going to listen to us on Apple uh, Podcasts, leave us a five-star review. I think we've earned it, huh? For Shane Gomal and Yellow, Sammy and Juliana, Master Control, they're Cavallaro. I'm Tony Marinaro. <laughs>
And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow The Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. Embrace your true nature. And Playground, your premier gaming destination.